Hi, this is Tom Stewart with Cleaning Business Today. We're uh, doing our weekly five o'clock webinar on coronavirus, just kind of an update in terms of uh, what's going on and uh, with the hope and uh, goal of providing some uh, useful information to uh, house cleaning businesses. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and uh, jump, jump right in on this. Um, this is kind of a slide that we've been been starting off with with uh, most of our discussions. I'll flip that around. Um, you know, things obviously are getting getting uh, getting um, worse. I guess just in terms of the number of people and uh, are getting sick around the world, including the United States. Um, a lot of major sporting events are, are being postponed or canceled. Um, more and more schools are, are, are being canceled. Um, it's starting to uh, hit the, the tipping point, if you will. So a lot of reason to, to, to have, have concerns and to, to be afraid uh, for our businesses. What I'm gonna be talking about today are some contingency plans that we should be uh, thinking about in terms of uh, how we should be planning and preparing to uh, make sure that uh, our businesses do okay through this, or you know, potentially we have the opportunity to to even prosper and 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 grow our businesses through this for for some of the reasons that that, that we have here. Um, I truly believe that hygienic cleaning, cleaning for health, cleaning for something more than just making a house look better is gonna be important to consumers once this whole thing is over for, for years ahead. I've made the analogy before, this is kind of like a 9-11 moment, that when this thing's over, people are going to be thinking completely different about, about house cleaning. And it's gonna be a really great way to differentiate yourself in the marketplace. If you can do more than just, uh, you know, run a vacuum cleaner and take trash out. If you can talk about how you sanitize and disinfect surfaces and and really study and learn the science of cleaning. And we're uh, working on some ways that, that, that we can uh, help all cleaning business owners grow and pick their game up in that area if they need help, if there's opportunities for improvement. We all have opportunities for improvement in that area. And in the weeks ahead, we're gonna be putting together some material that uh, that we, we, we believe will be uh, be very useful and for that. Uh, the labor market should be coming back to us. Uh, I would be surprised if uh, we don't see a lot of uh, extra qualified labor on the market in the weeks ahead for, for, for obvious reasons. Um, the press loves talking about the coronavirus and they're looking for subject matter experts so we can get some, some good PR, basically free advertising for our business. Um, Increase income, you know, we have, uh, you know, as with you know, consumers seeing more value in, in, in professional house cleaning because of the, the, the health and, and reducing the, the, the chance of, of, of infection, um, it kind of goes hand in hand. More value means you should be able to command a higher price, and you should. And, um, you know, that should, should, uh, equate to, uh, to to more profits as well, higher margins. Um, there's going to be some opportunities for non-traditional uh, income. Um, you know, some consumers might not want uh, people in their home, but at the same time, there's going to be businesses, there's going to be schools, there's going to be a lot of other people that are concerned about taking measures to reduce the chance of infection and if we are professional house cleaners and cleaning companies that have the right products, have the have the right uh, knowledge that that we can go in and reduce the uh, chance of infection by sanitizing and, and disinfecting high touch areas and, and doing taking other measures to to make indoor uh, space safe, and that's a great opportunity for us. So. You know, it's not, uh, you know, there could, could be a really big silver lining in this cloud, if you will. Um, we talked about uh, kind of our, our smart business moves plan. And, you know, we play a really important role. We are as cleaning businesses on the front line of defense against infectious disease. Um, obviously, there's a tremendous concern about that right now. So, again, that's an opportunity. Plus, we have an obligation and role to make sure that we're being responsible and for you know the sake of our uh, employees as well as our clients to 
know the proper techniques to keep everybody safe. Communication plan, we've talked about that and we have some examples on our Cleaning Business Day resource page and we'll go over that a little bit at the end. Um, we um, developing an action plan and there's a lot to that and we've been going through some of those steps had a pretty good uh, uh, Facebook live yesterday Matt Ricketts helped us out with some of the things that he's doing in his business uh, training is going to be really important we're going to be spending more time talking about that next week uh, the public relations we touched upon that contingency planning is what we're going to be uh, spending a little bit of time on today along with uh, and after we do all of those things we need to assess what we're learning because things are happening fast and we're going to learn more and more we need to constantly be reviewing and revising all of those plans and then we basically start all over again um, few bullet items on contingency planning. I'm going to start with working capital. Um, even with our best efforts, there's a real chance that we might find ourselves in a situation where we don't uh, have the same amount of income coming into our business as we uh, as we once did. You know, we might lose some business, at least for a while. And when things, uh, you know, if schools close in your area and businesses maybe would be slowing down and if more consumers don't want uh, people in their homes, we need to be prepared for that. You know, uh, what uh, fixed costs do we have in our business? You know, do we have, uh, uh, you know, lease or, 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 or mortgages? Do we have car notes? You know, do we have, uh, you know, what, what, what bills and obligations do we have for our business and personally? And, you know, you need to also be thinking about your employees as well, your, 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 your key people and everybody in general to, to, to make sure that they're, um, you know, getting the, the help that they need through these tough times if they're losing hours. Um, fortunately, there's a lot that seems going to be happening at the uh, federal government level that's going to be, or at least a lot of discussions that could be uh, taking care of your employees, which would be a huge help. Um, but uh, for your business, uh, and you know, you need to, to, one thing that I would encourage people to do is to be looking for uh, sources of working capital, ways that you could have some money set aside. And if you don't have any, see if you can borrow some. I don't know if you've got lines of credit set up, maybe an equity line on your home or, or just some line of credit. Um, if things get really, really bad, those lines of credit can be pulled away. If you try to draw up on them, sometimes the banks, I mean, the banks, if you read the fine print and all of that, they can, can, can basically shut those down on you. Um, I remember back like in 2007, 2008, when things started getting really bad, um, I maxed out every credit line that I had and borrowed every dollar I could find from wherever I could get it and scroll it away in a bank account, um, knowing I wanted to get it when I could get it rather than leaving it there and, and trusting because I did have uh, some lines of credit, like credit cards and stuff like that kind of uh, got sucked down quite a bit by the bank. So if you can do that now while, while, while the money's still there, that's good. Plus, interest rates are really low. You also want to be thinking about uh, what you're going to do from a labor standpoint. If schools are closing, if daycare is closing, you've got a lot of employees that really don't have uh, a contingency plan for what they're going to do with their kids. So they might not be able to work. Um, so you want to be having those discussions with, with, with your employees now. You know, do they have a plan? If they don't have a plan, maybe you can help them figure out a plan. Um, maybe your employees can kind of, you know, you can get groups of people where maybe together they could, could afford to uh, get some help or maybe they could help each other watching their kids. I mean, you don't have to do this by yourself, I guess is my point. Start having the discussion with your employees now in terms of what we're going to do with daycare. If they need it, again, contingency plan. It might not be an issue, but if it is, you need to have a plan. Um, and I guess the other part of that is, you know, you might want to be recruiting, maybe not necessarily hiring, but at least recruiting to have people in the pipeline. And the thinking is you're going to be having more people out there looking for work as restaurants and hospitality and tourism and a lot of these other industries are slowing down. They're going to be putting some, some really good, good, uh, talent on the market. People who wanted to make a living being an Uber driver really getting slammed. I mean, there's just a, a, a lot of uh, people out there that I believe are going to be looking for work here uh, shortly. 
you need to be planning on, on where you're going to be getting your supplies. And just because the last time you placed an order, you were able to get everything that you wanted, I wouldn't trust that to be the case on the months ahead. Um, our typical operating procedure at Castle Capers is to order like one month ahead. We've been, you know, every month we do an inventory and we buy enough product to keep us going for the next month. We've been stocking up like three months ahead. Now we're not hoarding stuff that we don't need, but the really basic stuff that's important for us, we've been buying extra of it just to have some on the shelf just in case supply lines do, uh, do get cut off, something to think about. Um, you might want to be looking around just for opportunities to cut cost. If you've got subscriptions to things or you're spending money in areas or maybe even, you know, your indirect labor, your office help, are there ways of, of getting the same things done a little more economically? Um, you don't necessarily have to pull the trigger on it, but you at least know what moves you can make if you needed to, to, to reduce that cost to uh, basically save the amount of money that you would need to pay your bills. Um, non-traditional revenue streams. I believe there's a, going to be a lot of those out there. Um, schools, businesses, uh, multi-family uh, uh, communities. A lot of people are going to be uh, going to be looking for for help sanitize, disinfect, and, and make their their properties safer. Um, which kind of gets us uh, to the uh, small business administration. Um, I'm going to share you know, a little bit of information from the uh, SBA website that uh, you know, small businesses, small business owners, house cleaning companies, we really all need to be spending some time this weekend. And that's why I wanted to do this today. I want, want us to all be spending some time doing some research on what's happening on the government side. Um, and the SBA is one, one organization that we, you know, uh, you know, all of us that, that are here in the United States would uh, would have access to. And they're doing some things. Um, let me see if I can pull it up here. If you go to their landing page, they've got a whole section here on just businesses that are impacted by the coronavirus. And... They've got several sections in terms of, you know, guidance for businesses and employers, um, disaster loan programs. We're talking about working capital. I would look into this. Um, might not need it, but it's one of those things I'd rather have it, not need it, need it, not have it. At least find out, you know, if you might qualify and how that would work. Um, I was doing some reading that I know, like in. Seattle, there are banks that are making zero interest loans to small businesses that can demonstrate that they've lost a certain percentage of their income. Um, sounds like a great opportunity. I would be, you know, looking into that and asking those questions as well. There's another thing here that I want to show you about local assistance. And SBA has this uh, program that they call SCORE. Um, that's an acronym for basic, I forget what the acronym stands for, but basically these are retired, uh, business professionals, executives who help small businesses. And that would be a resource that I would reach out to as well, especially if you're concerned about losing revenue. And one of the things that I would inquire about is what are the non-traditional sources of income that might be out there because if you look up here just above we've got government contracting the government's going to be throwing money out hand over fist to try to bring the economy back plus they're afraid of uh basically just trying to contain the virus and infection control and they're going to one of the biggest things that you can do in that area to help is to clean in a hygienic way opportunity for us guys um, you want to get out there and you want people who are looking for that type of help to know that you're there to, to, to be part of the solution. Networking with the SBA, figuring out how you can get uh, recognized by you know, the federal government as, as, as a contractor. This will help you there. But honestly, I think there are going to be a lot more opportunities at the state and even the local level and your local uh, SBA office in, in, in score contacts can tell you 
who the purchasing people are at a, at a, at a, at a county and city level and you know what organizations within the local government might be looking for the type of help that, that, that you're providing and they could help make the connection. So, um, you know, that's uh, pretty much what we got today. Um, we're gonna be back Monday at five o'clock Eastern. Uh, we'll be picking the discussion up. Um, wanna show a couple of things here with you. If you haven't subscribed to Cleaning Business Today yet, over here on the right, we're uh, shooting out, um, we're going to be, you know, starting next week. Uh, Derek Christian, my partner in uh, Clean Business Today, we're going to start doing a newsletter on a daily basis with some of this information. If you want to get that, make sure that you've got your email and contact information entered there. Um, we got a really good article here that goes over a lot of the basics on the coronavirus, and we're working on some more content there. If you want to have access to some of the resources that, that we're putting out here for, for download, or some of them are, a lot of it's download, some of it are just links to, to websites that will be useful to you. Go to coronavirus-downloads, and here's information down here at the bottom is the link to the, uh, the COVID-19 uh, page on the Small Business Administration. Um, I hope you're finding this information useful. Um, let me know if there's more information or anything specific you'd like for us to, uh, to be addressing next week. Uh, again, we'll be back Monday at five o'clock Eastern. Thank you uh, for taking the time to, to, to listen to this uh, information that we believe is, is, is very important for all uh, house cleaning uh, companies to, to, to know and to implement. And uh, you guys have a great weekend and hope to see you Monday. Thank you.